Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to today's video. Today, we'll be talking about why Asian guys are too nice. This is something that I have discovered through my observation of Asian men and the inquiries that I get. I noticed that Asian men are perceived as too shy. Maybe there's some legitimate truth to this. They're too nice. I truly believe that some Asian men allow their passivity to overrun their true genuine emotions and desires. They're viewed as just the nice guy. I definitely believe that a lot of Asian men are nice not because they genuinely want to be. They just don't believe that there's any other option. They're nice by default. And when your niceness doesn't have legitimate merit to it, it's false, it's fake, it's disingenuine. There's nothing wrong with being a kind-hearted individual where you do care about other people, but not to the extent of people pleasing. You're being nice to get the approval and satisfaction from others. And this is very detrimental to your mental health and who you are and character development. Your yes is meaningless unless you can say no. And I feel like a lot of Asian men are too nice. They allow their shyness to override what they want in life. They don't know how to interact. I talk to a lot of my clients who say their shyness is holding them back from interacting with women and friends. They genuinely want a girlfriend or intimacy or friends outside of their immediate social circle, but they don't know how to develop it. And their shyness and social anxiety is crippling to the point where they don't know what to do. And you know, you could say the simple thing like go out and talk to people, just go and approach and say hi or introduce yourself to new friends or classmates join clubs. But this is not a very viable option because that is social death, right? And that advice, as general as it is, it would work logically speaking, but there's so many hurdles, mental obstacles in your way where they will never do that. So you have to do the internal work to overcome these challenges so you realize it. I think the first step is recognizing why are you nice? Why are you too nice? And what I mean by that is why do you not stand up to people? Why do you let things slide? Why do you just agree? Your agreeableness is destroying your self-esteem. Why do you let people trample on you? It's because you don't believe that your genuine desires and what you want, your needs will be met. You feel like you have to change and you don't believe that you could be loved for who you are at your heart. And if you stand up or speak up, people will be angry at you. And what happens is you want the approval and you want to maintain the peace, but realize by maintaining the peace, you're destroying who you are. You're not a man, you're not an individual, you are just a sheep. And that's something that Asian men need to stand up to. There's nothing wrong with being humble. Humility is a great aspect, but when it goes so far where there's an existing problem, let's say there's a problem at work or a school in your friendships, and instead of standing up and be like, hey, I can't do this after 6 p.m. I need my alone time. I need time away from work or these projects to enjoy life. And I know a lot, of Asian guys who struggle with that and work where managers keep pushing more and more down their throat and they're, they can't say no. They don't wanna be seen as inferior or incompetent. But realize saying no from things doesn't mean you're incompetent. It means you are capable and fully competent. It means that you are in charge of your own life. You know your own needs and that's okay. And your own needs need to be met. Saying no, it will probably save your life. I think saying no will help you in long-term whatever goals you want. If you're overburdened with work, you should tell your manager, hey, I need some, you know, some time to finish this up, or I don't wanna work past 6 p.m. You know, sometimes it's okay. Some weeks require a very intense work schedule, right? If it's auditing, seasoning, or something like that, yeah, of course, but if it's 24, 700 hour work week, 80 hour work weeks, that is not feasible. And you have to learn to stand up for yourself. And I know, I know, you think that if you say no to something, you would get fired. If you talk to your boss about having time off to enjoy your life, to recharge and they fire you because you won't work 80 to 100 hours a week, day in, day out, 24 seven, maybe get a new job. But if you love it, go for it. I can't really say anything, but a lot of the times working 80 to 100 hours is not a good thing. There's definitely times to do it, but it's not all the time. You will drain yourself. You will deteriorate your mental and physical health. When it comes to dating, I know you would rather be friend zone than actually let a woman know your true genuine desire and that you're romantically interested in her. A lot of Asian men go through the friendship route, the, the friend zone route. They want to be on the outskirts of it. They don't wanna make too much noise or be seen because they don't wanna um, maroon what they have or piss the girl off by telling them that they have genuine emotions or feelings for them. And they're afraid to be a man, right? They're afraid to be man to woman in the interaction, but realize if you aren't going in with a true genuine desire letting people know, or not even like verbally, right? But it's pretty obvious by looking at someone flirting that you're romantically interested in them. 
But if you just want to be friend zoned and go through the friendship route, like, oh, I don't want to make her mad. Maybe one day she'll realize how great I am. And the simple truth is realize this. If you're waiting for someone to appreciate how great you are, they probably will never do it. People appreciate what they have pretty immediate, right? When you're a high value man, people know who you are and what you stand for, especially in early friendships. A lot of my friends know from the beginning that I am a great fucking friend. I'll have your back. I'm charismatic and we always have great times, but it's also one of those things where like, you know, if you piss me off, you do something wrong, just realize I will leave and walk away from the scenario. I understand the depths and the requirements of having a great friendship. And the thing is, I won't let someone shit on me just because they're trying to have an ego trip over me. I do not believe in the idea of scarcity when it comes to friends. I believe that we are great and we can make new friends and great friends will never make put you down. They always put you up and realize I'm not afraid to walk away. I think that's the power you have is that self-abundance mentality of like, I can walk away from any job, any scenario, any friendship or relationship that no longer serves me, that no longer serves my purpose and mission. And it's not almost like egotistical, but it's like saying like, I provide value in the same way I receive value. But if someone keeps taking and taking and leeching energy off of you, it's time to walk away because you're not afraid to lose friendships. You believe in your worth and value and you know you can generate new leads, um, new income sources, new friends, new girlfriends, a new wife, it's the same thing, right? You can go as far as you want, but it comes down to this. Stop being overly nice. Being overly nice sounds like the easiest way to make friends. I think the fake charismatic nice that you see on the West Coast, like the whole Yogi California things of, oh man, one love brother, like that type of stuff. It's almost super cringy because you know it's fake. You know they're smiling, but behind the smile, they're like, I don't like this guy, but they don't wanna say it to your fucking face. I think being fake nice is so detrimental because what happens is you're creating false friendships on the idea that you guys are cool and your niceness is appreciated. Just realize your fake niceness, people can tell. People can tell it's fucking bullshit. They know that you don't have a backbone. They don't respect you. And that's number one thing was when people don't respect you, you will not be treated greatly. If you're nice to every single person, even though you generally don't like people, I think it's okay to be kind hearted to an extent. But if you don't like an individual, I think it's okay to express your desires and ideas that you don't like this individual. You don't want to hang out with them anymore or remove yourself from the situation. But if you keep doing it because you're afraid to lose something, you're afraid to lose face, lose value, lose friendships, I think that's a detrimental thing that actively feeds into the Asian stereotype of Asian men being so effeminate, not masculine, having no backbone, having no virtue, not being courageous, not being confident, not being a man. There's something great about being a man where you know that you can face all the disapproval in the world and still stand by your morals and your mission and purpose, right? Your core fundamental values. I think that's great is standing true to who you are despite the world not agreeing with you or appreciating you. I think that's a very important thing to recognize is standing true to yourself despite what the world throws at you. And the thing is, if you're capable of being a monster, like Jordan Peterson says, you're capable of being nice. But the thing is, if you don't have that shadow incorporated, that monster incorporated to who you are, your niceness means jack shit. And I would say that's the truth. Recognize that your niceness, it has to be genuine. And I would say, don't be a dick for the simple reason of being a dick. But I think what I'm trying to say is, be genuinely nice towards other people because you are a kind person, because you want what's best for everyone. But when it comes down to things you disagree or you wanna voice your opinion, I would say stand up for yourself. And if someone treats you poorly, walk away. Don't just be nice to maintain that piece of the friendship, but stand up for what you believe in. Learn to speak up for yourself and your needs and know when to set your boundaries and speak up for those boundaries. It's one thing to set the boundaries, but it's another thing to reinforce the boundaries. Setting boundaries is very easy but maintaining and consistently reinforcing boundaries is where the hard work begins. But I'll say this, Asian guys, stop being so nice by default. Be nice because you want to. Don't be nice to get something in return. And that's the issue nice guys have, is they're nice to try to get something. It's not genuine, it's manipulative and it's coercive. They're nice to you to try to get something from you, whether that's attention, love, joy, friendships. It's a terrible thing to pretend to be nice to someone to get something in return. And I think that's what a lot of Asian men do in the dating scene is they're just overly agreeable. They're so nice on dates. And the thing is, they don't really have any character. They don't really stand out. They're not an independent thinker. And then the girls are saying, yeah, well, he's nice. He's a nice guy. Okay. If that's all you have going for you is because, oh, you're really nice. <laughs> 
Okay, that's probably not the best thing. I think it's okay to be viewed as like, yeah, man, super friendly guy, very nice, very charismatic, empathetic. Yeah, but he also is hilarious. I think there's something great about that is realizing that people know that you can be a dick, but you're choosing to be nice instead. I think that's the most important lesson is people know you have the ability to not be nice and still get to what you want, but you choose to be friendly because you know it's the right thing to do. You're choosing to be nice because you know you don't have to. I think that's the difference is knowing that you don't have to be nice to get what you want, but you choose to do so instead because you wanna be remembered as a great individual is the difference. It's having the option to be nice, not being nice by default. If you wanna talk about this further, please email me at bedroomtalksconsult at gmail.com and set up a one-on-one -on -one consultation. It's quite affordable. If you wanna see what I'm up to, follow me on Instagram at m.deep20. As always, wish you the best. Namaste.